The fifth element that, I, that hasn't come up in these psalms, but I do want to comment on it, um, and, and that is the vengeance. Uh, one, of the, one of the objections to these psalms is that they really want God to get the guys that have done it. So uh, the, the best case for that I know is in Psalm 58, Psalm 58, 6. You can imagine saying this, and then your psychotherapist says, is there anything else you'd like to say? Yes! And he goes again, 58, 6, oh God, break the teeth in their mouth. And you could just, in a nice congregation, you can see doing this and you say, the word of the Lord, thanks be to God. <laughs> oh God, break the teeth in their mouth. Tear out the fangs of the young lions, O oh Lord. Let them vanish like water that runs away like grass that's trodden down. Let them be like the snail that dissolves into the slime, into the untimely birth that never sees the sun. Sooner than your pots can feel the heat of thorns, whether green or blaze, may he be swept away. Ah. <laughs> now, the word is that Christians ought not to use these psalms because Christians ought not to feel that way. Agreed. But what do you feel that way? We do have, from time to time, yearnings for vengeance. So the question is, not should we feel that way, the question is, if you feel that way, what are you going to do with it? And I can think of only three things you can do with your thirst for vengeance. You can act it out, get a gun, we're seeing that, but people like us wouldn't do that. You can deny it, hmm. but what happens when you deny it, it tends to come out somewhere else that you didn't plan on, in your family or somewhere else. The third thing you can do, which is what Freud understood so well, you can give it over to your therapist, you can give it over to God. And I propose that's what they're doing in these psalms. They're saying, I am being eaten alive by my anger and I'd like to hand it off to you. Well, parents tend to know about this. Two siblings are playing in the backyard and one of them hurts the other one and the problem is that the parent doesn't really know who initiated it. But the one who has a little scratch with a little blood comes in the house and like a psalmist, must use great hyperbole to get mother's attention that if you don't do something quickly, I'm going to die from this blood. You do get exaggerated speech. And you do a Band-Aid, and you think you've gotten it taken care of, but then he says, what are you going to, what are you going to do about him? I'll not be happy till you punish him for what he did to me. A wise parent does not say, you can't talk that way about your brother. A wise parent does not say, wait a minute, let me write this down so that I can do it. A wise parent says, uh, why don't you leave that to me? I have heard you, and now you can leave it with me, and I'll decide what needs to be done. I think that's uh, how these psalms, at their best, work. And the recovery of the thirst for vengeance in the Psalter, it seems to me to be an important project in the life of the church. Otherwise, people, and particularly young people, don't know that we know about that stuff. 
And we have known about that stuff forever. And we have devised ways of processing it to health.